Another uh, another great day for Auburn, and uh, we're excited. We really, really are. You know the um, the process for, for hiring an offensive coordinator. You know we had a lot of moving parts. Probably the first question before you ask it, I'll answer it. Um, you know is why so long? And um, you know just with a bowl game and, and being the coordinator for the bowl game, uh, that being a huge priority for me with our team then. Uh, combined with recruiting, our recruiting efforts, and trying to be relentless on the recruiting trail, um, and at the same time, um, trying to hire two coordinators. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and um, but one thing that I was going to make sure was that I did my due diligence uh, to get the best man here for all of them, and uh, that was my number one priority. So however long that took, um, I was going to take that time to do our due diligence. Uh, to bring in the best man for our young people here, A, um, and we think we got that done. Uh, that being said, um, you know, I want to introduce to you guys Scott Leffler. Um, I believe Scott is one of the bright, rising young stars in this profession. You know, I don't think there's any question about it. We're thrilled to have him here. Uh, he's got a very unique past in that, um, obviously, he played quarterback in Michigan. And at a very, very young age, uh, Lloyd Carr brought him back to Michigan uh, at 23 or 24 years old to be the quarterback coach. And I think that's where it starts, and that's a mouthful. And that's a, that's a tough job at a, at a young and, and early age. Uh, it was very important to me um, to bring in somebody that I knew uh, had a reputation for and, um, and was really good at his trade in terms of developing quarterbacks. I think that's extremely, extremely important. When your offensive coordinator is your quarterback coach, uh, that's a huge piece of the puzzle. And that was one of my very first, um, you know, that was one of my very first uh, ideas on my list when I went to look for these guys is I wanted somebody that I knew could take a quarterback and develop him to get, you know, get, uh, to get where we needed him to be to win championships. Scott certainly has had a proven record to do that. Um, he's had a lot of great experiences along the way. Uh, he was in Michigan, I believe, seven years uh, before he took a, took a job in the NFL with the Detroit Lions. Uh, and then from there, obviously, going to the University of Florida and getting a chance to work in that system with Tim Tebow uh, before, uh, before uh, Urban Meyer uh, resigned and then he obviously went to uh, Temple with Steve Adazio. He did a great job there winning nine games this year. So, that being said, uh, I feel great uh, about bringing Scott on board. Uh, I know we got not just, a, I know we've hired not just a, a, a great football coach, he's a great person, he's a great man. Relationships with his players uh, and relationships, uh, you know, to not just his quarterbacks, but the whole football team is very, very important to him. Uh, he's a great teacher. Uh, we, uh, again, we did our due, due diligence. And, uh, there was no question in my mind that he was the right guy for the job. When all the smoke cleared, I only had a handful of people that I interviewed, uh, not many at all, but I already had a good idea of what directions I wanted to go. And um, I'm just thrilled to have Scott here, and I know him beyond the shadow of a doubt he's a great hire. So, that being said, uh, I'm going to introduce you to Scott and let Scott come up here and uh, say a couple of words here. First, I would like to um, begin by thanking our head coach, Gene Chizik, our AD, Jay Jacobs, our associate AD, Tim Jackson, and our president, Jay Gouge, uh, and the rest of the Auburn family for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, my wife, Amy, my son, Luke, uh, my daughter, Alexis, and myself uh, were ecstatic to be here at Auburn. It's, a, it's an absolute honor, and uh, we promise this from our family is that we will give our heart and soul to the University of Auburn and do everything in our power to help us win the championship. Uh, this, eight, this morning I was able to uh, address our team, and, uh, and I said this to them, uh, this is one of the few places in America uh, that uh, the expectations are to win the championship year in and year out. And uh, it's an absolute uh, privilege and an honor to be a part of so something so special. Um, when taking this job, I understand that uh, this, this job, it's not a right to be at the uh, University of Auburn. It's an absolute privilege, and uh, with that privilege becomes great responsibility. And uh, it's, it's our, uh, our objective and our mission as coaches 
to make sure that, uh, that we teach our players that this place has great tradition. It's been laid by great players. It's been laid by great coaches. It's been laid by great administrators. And it is our job to fulfill uh, the obligation and the uh, responsibility to keep this tradition rolling in, uh, in, uh, in a first class manner. Um, I'm honored to be here. It's an absolute privilege. And uh, again, uh, Coach Chiswick, thank you for this opportunity. Take questions? Well, I guess a little bit about offensive philosophy. Just looking at your background, it looks like you've done a variety of different things, Coach. Yes, I've been uh, very fortunate to be in a pro-style offense, the NFL, and uh, Coach Myers' spread offense. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to take our personnel, uh, we're going to assess where exactly we are these next two weeks, and uh, we're going to do a great job going out and recruiting number one, the best players in America, taking our personnel here, and we're going to build a system to get our playmakers the football and uh, do everything in our power to make sure that we're helping our defense and our special teams uh, here at Auburn. Do you have a preferred style? You know what, I like it all. Uh, I've been so fortunate to be around such great coaches, such great head coaches. The majority of the head coaches that I've been around are defensive guys, so I understand uh, the mentality uh, to win a championship is all based around great defense and special teams. And it's our job as, and as an offense to protect that defense, to make sure our players are, are, are highly involved in the special teams. And at the end of the day, it's our job to score football points, and uh, that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the great recruits that we're going out there and recruiting, we're going to take our players, we're going to assess exactly what they do best, and then we're going to form that offense around them. Um, when did you and Gene first kind of start talking about the job, and if you could just kind of take us through the process? You know what? Uh, it, it's a, it was a wonderful process. It was the most intense most detailed interview that I've ever been around. Um, we're dealing with a head coach that uh, is a detail-oriented guy. I, I got to know him um, whenever he was at Texas, and uh, we got the best head coach in America here at Auburn. And uh, the, the process of uh, the interview was unbelievable. And uh, uh, it, all I can say is this, is that uh, it was detailed, it was thorough, and at the end of the day, uh, I was fortunate enough to get an offer from Coach, and uh, I'm ecstatic to be here. So when you, you say detail, are you like, talking about looking at film together, or what type of stuff did, did you do during this process? Football talk. Football talk, and also which is the, the area that I was most impressed with, he wanted to find out what type of person you were, if you cared about your players, if you wanted to make sure that your players graduated, if you wanted to make sure your players grew up to be good fathers, good husbands, and uh, obviously, in our business, we got to win too. And uh, I was very impressed with that part of the interview. Just like I said, we've got a first class head coach, the best of the best, and it is an absolute privilege and honor to be a part of his staff. Talk about your season in Temple as an offensive coordinator. You guys really had a good season, got things turned around. Uh, talk about how it developed, and it's a pretty interesting mix of run and pass this year. You guys get a lot of run. Yes, it was, a, it was a great experience in, uh, in North Philadelphia. Uh, we had a bunch of coaches that were aligned, uh, just like we'll be aligned here. And uh, any time that you've got good people with good kids, you've got a chance. And that's what we have here at Auburn. Uh, we recruit great players. Uh, I look forward in, in an hour to go out and recruit some of the finest players in America. And uh, any time that you've got great kids with good, good chemistry in the coaching staff, guys that care about their players inside and out, You've got a chance, and that's what, what happened at Temple. And uh, I've been very fortunate that I've been at great places that uh, we were able to have success. And uh, I'm ecstatic to be here at Auburn and uh, to continue the great tradition that's been laid here by the great players, coaches, alum, fans, and administrators that have built this place. Speaking of last year at, uh, at Temple, you, you started, I think, three different guys. Yeah. <laughs> Quarterback was that? Uh, because of injuries or just hot hand type things? No, we, uh, we were struggled at, from the very beginning trying to find uh, uh, our guy. And uh, Chris Coyer, who ended up being the starter, the starter for the last six games, um, he, uh, he was not able to play spring football because of a broken hand. And uh, he developed into the guy who was able to, to learn the system and he did a great job for us. 
Have you gotten a, kind of a chance to take a look at what Auburn has at quarterback? And if you have, kind of what are your impressions of? Just like I said, uh, you know, I was hired here uh, yesterday. And uh, uh, I haven't had time to, to look at the, the ins and the outs of it. But I remember all these guys when I was at Florida when I recruited them all. And uh, I think they're very good football players. And uh, I, again, I really look forward to, to diving into and watching their tape, getting a, a feel for who they are inside and out, uh, learning uh, who they are, where they're from, and uh, kind of building a relationship uh, that you need to have between the quarterback and the quarterback coach. So uh, I think they're outstanding. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to building a relationship and uh, finding a way for them, those guys, to help our team lead us to a SEC championship. You've had a chance to, to coach quarterbacks from Brady to, to Tebow and everywhere in between. How can <laughs> coaching guys like that, how does that help kind of shape you as a quarterback coach and now as a coordinator? It's been uh, outstanding. Uh, I always had the philosophy, you go find guys that are smarter and more talented than you. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to go out there and we're going to recruit and we're going to find the very best quarterback in America that has the it factor. A guy that's smart, a guy that's tough, a guy that's athletic, and a guy that gets it, and a guy that just wants to win for Auburn. Period. And no, no other hidden objective, just wants to win for Auburn. Uh, I've learned more from those guys than, than you'd ever know, believe it or not. I'm their teacher. Um, and uh, actually last night, it was kind of funny, uh, Tommy picked up the phone and found out that I got this job. and. Uh, it was a great conversation, and he goes, Scott, you got one of the best jobs in America. And go, go be yourself, go be who you are, and go keep being a team guy and everything. Will, you'll help Auburn. And that's all I want to do, is I want to help Auburn and uh, keep the traditions that have, that have been instilled at this place for several years. Is it helpful having strengths in the SEC to have a feel for the league and speed of the defenses? And that kind We're in the best of the best. That's uh, we are coaching at the very best uh, conference in America. You look at who's won the national championship, it's remarkable. It's the best defenses, it's the best coaching, it's the best players, and uh, it's the best recruiting. And uh, that's the thing that I look forward to. Uh, we're going to go out and we're going to recruit the very best players at Auburn. And they're not only are great football players, but they're, they're good people. They love Auburn. And uh, we're going to go get those guys. That's the whole objective is to go get great players, Put them around great coaches, care about them, uh, discipline them, and at the end of the day, have a heck of a lot of fun and, and try to, uh, to win the championship every year. Time for a few more. Scott, who were some of your main coaching influences, and was there anybody that was integral in getting you into coaching to begin with? I'm very fortunate to, uh, to uh, work for some tremendous head coaches. And uh, to single one of them out, that would be unfair. Uh, the guy that I was with most of my career, the guy that knows me, I consider him the second father, is Lloyd Carr. Um, he's known me since I was an 18-year-old kid. He got me into the profession. He took a chance on some 23-year-old guy to come and uh, be a part of his program, and I'm indebted to him. And very similar to all, I'll be indebted to uh, Coach Chiswick for giving us this opportunity to, uh, to be at such a wonderful place. And uh, the one thing that, uh, that you'll get from me is uh, when, you, when you give us, our family, an opportunity, you're going to get the very best. I promise that I will, I will be a tireless worker and do everything in my power to, uh, to make sure that Auburn and Coach Chiswick is successful. The guy you're following here, you know, Gus Malzahn had some pretty prolific offenses here. I mean, is there any sort of pressure to, you know, take up where he left off or anything like that, or how do you kind of view that? He did a wonderful job here. You, uh, we won a national championship two years ago. He's, uh, he's Fine coach, he's one of the best in the business. And uh, at any place that you go to, there's pressure. But the way that we're going to do this is we're going to be a team oriented. Uh, it's not going to be offense, it's not going to be defense, it's not going to be special teams, it's going to be a team oriented deal. There's not one guy. And uh, when Coach Chizik uh, hired Brian Van Gorder, I was ecstatic. And uh, I'm just really super excited to, to be a part of the team. Not just the offense, the team, the defense, the special teams, and obviously having a, a big role in our offense. Anything else? All right. Your hand. Uh, I wish I had a great story for you, but unfortunately I don't. I lost a, a battle with a, an SUV car, so I <laughs> put my hand in a car and cracked it. So I wish it was some great story, like I came out of the subway and saved some lady, but uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> so. 
Just, you just kind of talk about about your as much as you can, your timeline and, and, and how many people you might have talked to and when you came to the final decision that, that Scott. You know, had. Philip, I'm not going to get into a lot of a lot of the detail uh, with that. You know, I had a handful of people, uh, which in the case there weren't many. And to be honest with you, uh, you know, I've, I've I've always had my short list. I mean, if, if another cute coach leaves tomorrow, I got the next group of guys that I'm going to talk to. And, and, and uh, so, you know, Scott was on the short list. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details other than he was the last one I talked to. And that was by design. And uh, was, again, very impressed. Uh, to answer a little bit about the earlier question, uh, it was a lot, of, a lot of film work and a lot of board work. And uh, it was a very uh, detailed interview about offense and throwing the ball, running the ball, protections, things of that nature that are very important uh, from a defensive set of glasses. So um, the interview went, went really well. Hey, here's the thing. I'm never going to put a timeline on that. I can only do things when I know that it's the right thing. And when it's the right thing, then that's when we're going to make the move. So uh, without question, it was the right thing, and we worked. We expedited everything uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so, again, that's, uh, that's about all I can tell you. That having been said, um, you know, you mentioned when, when uh, we met Coach Van Gorder about as soon as possible. With signing day coming up in nine days, did, did you feel like you needed to go ahead and get Well, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, the common sense answer to that is the sooner the better for signing day. I'm looking at the best thing for all of them. I'm not looking for this date or I'm looking for, I've got a room full of 100 kids and my number one goal is to make sure that they are coached and given a chance to develop and succeed by the best. So is recruiting important? Heck yeah, it's important. But my most important objective was to get the right guy for Auburn and these hundred guys I've already got in this room. And so, you know, luckily we're able to do it within a week, but that was not a deal breaker. That was not a deal breaker. So um, I'm always going to do, in my opinion, uh, what I think is best, when the time is best. And, you know, sometimes that's not always uh, your desired timetable. Uh, but the desired timetable for me is, is the right time. I know that I've done what I need to do. So I feel great about it. Gene, uh, both your coordinators have experience in the SEC previously and in the NFL. Was that a big factor in your decisions to hire them? You know, yes and no. I mean, Mark, you know, I mean, you know, I think when you go out to hire guys, there's just certain things that, that you're looking for. You know, with Brian, I had a previous relationship. I knew him very well. And I know his reputation is second to none. So uh, that was a little bit different than the offensive coordinator because some of the ones um, that I had as, as a handful, I, I did know. Some I, some I didn't. And, uh, but, you know, I was just wanting to make sure that I did my due diligence. Now, the fact that they've been in the SEC and had those experiences, the fact that they've been in the F NFL and had those experiences, do they help? Well, absolutely, because it's part of their journey. Um, you know, uh, I think it's really big that I hired Scott, and Scott has played the position of quarterback at its highest level. He's been around national championships. He's, co he's coached some of the best quarterbacks that are out there. And um, all of those things matter. So, um, to answer your question, yeah, I like the idea of that, but that wasn't, you know, that wasn't necessarily, you know, the drive what drove this this search. Gene, did you know him before this search? I mean, was he someone you you met at, at meetings? Well, yeah, we met. You know, like he said, when I was at Texas, you know, Scott came and spoke to our, you know, spoke to our coaches, high school coaches at our clinics, and we've we've passed. Um, you know, our ships have passed in the night, so we've met and we've known each other in that regard, but not to the degree that, you know, that I knew, that I knew Brian. Um, 
little bit different. So, you know, in this coaching profession, you run across people all the time. It's kind of that fraternity of people that you know. Um, and I, I knew this guy had a great reputation. And again, you know, it's about getting on the phone and calling people from the NFL to the SEC to everybody in between. Uh, and, and, and before you even decide that he's a guy you're, you're definitely going to talk to. I mean, you, you do your due diligence that way first. And, um, and then everything else fell into place. When you were kind of getting that scouting report on him from your, your associates in the business, what did they say about him? What was the thing that kind of perked your interest? A brilliant football coach in terms of what he knows X's and O's. Uh, really great in relating with players and being able to, again, which was one of the most important things for me, was being able to develop a quarterback. And as we know in this league, and to win anywhere, you got to be able to develop quarterbacks. And so uh, there was no question, everybody that I talked to saying, basically saying the same song. And, um, and that was from NFL guys to college guys and anybody that had been around him. And, um, so again, I had a great comfort level before we ever met and started talking about the details of football, Auburn philosophies and things of that nature. Take a few more. Gene, for the last three years, Auburn's had a pretty distinct offensive identity. Is going forward, is there going to be a little bit more flexibility, particularly as it relates to the hurry up and, and going super fast all the time? Well, I think Scott touched on that a little bit. You know, here, here's our situation at Auburn right now. We're going to come back in. This is kind of a new beginning for us, if you will. It, it's a new beginning, and um, we're going to... We, we've done a really, really nice job recruiting here in terms of the last two years and getting two top five classes. We have some good football players on this campus. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and evaluate, and I'm going to let Brian take the defense, and we're going to evaluate together what we have, who we have, and then come up again with uh, defensively exactly what we want to do, uh, how we want to do it. Brian's been a 4-3 guy. I've been a 4-3 guy. We don't anticipate that changing. Uh, but when you talk about sub packages, meaning nickel and dimes and things of that nature, you know, depending on the personnel we got, you know, that's how we'll proceed. Offensively, Scott will sit down and do the same thing. We'll look at our personnel. We'll see what we've got. Scott has been really blessed to be around a variety of offenses that have all been successful. So, and, you know, everybody's going to talk about spread and pro. I don't even know what those are anymore. I mean, I really don't. I don't know, you know, pro offense, but they're in one back every time. And, you know, but I mean, this is a spread, but they're running the counter and the power and the ISO. So, I, you know, I think all of those terms that we use these days, I'm a defensive guy, and I can't even tell you what they are. You know, and um, so, it, you know, all that, what they're called, and how, that's all overrated. It's real simple on offense right now. Create the offense to have the flexibility to use your best players, get your best players the football, protect the ball, coach your quarterback, make sure you're giving yourself a chance to win by not turning the ball over uh, and scoring some points. So you can call that offense whatever you want to call it. We're going to get our people in the right spots, put them where it fits offensively, and then we're going to go with it. Anything else? Um, just kind of catching up with the news from a while ago. I mean, were you were you kind of disappointed with the way that Mike Dyer's situation worked out and that that couldn't be resolved? I'm not going to talk about the players that aren't here. I'll talk about anybody that is here. I wish them well.